Yet again, another PlayStation 5 HDMI port repair brought to you by iTech Pro. Let's dive in and let's see what's going on with this one. Ooh, so we can actually see some obvious damage from the HDMI port right here on the back. Uh, so I'm gonna guess it's probably, I'm gonna guess it maybe or maybe 50-50. What do you guys think? Broken pads or just uh, some pins are loose? We'll see. I don't wanna guess it too early. Now I did boot it up and it did post with a blue light and then eventually a white light, so which is a good sign. Looks like it's making a full boot. Uh, and we'll go ahead and take this apart. I'm gonna speed this up because this is a, it's not a very long process, but it's like a million screws. So we found the culprit. Uh, looks like these, all of the pads are completely disconnected. If you see me tap it, you're gonna see that. That's that's the extreme force right there. Either the console fell down, uh, or it just they, somebody went beast mode and plugged the HDMI cord in too hard. I'm gonna guess what what uh it's gonna be a bit of a fall damage, but um yeah the the uh, the capacitor is missing here, but we do have spare parts, so we'll go ahead and replace that. Um, there are some, some models that this is kind of like NC, uh, like no stuff or not connected. Um, but you could tell by uh, the top of the pads that uh, previously there was a component that was actually installed. So we're going to go ahead and replace that. So let's go ahead and uh, add some flux and some, some solder. Um, I'm just going to add some, I'm going to dip my iron into some low melt. And then I'm gonna turn on my fume extractor so it may get just a little louder. And we're gonna go over the pads. Pins and pads. So with this type of solder, it's lower melting temperature compared to the factory solder. So it's gonna be way easier to remove this port. So I like to have a sort of a blob around the uh, pins and then uh, we'll go ahead and fold the anchors. So we'll turn this to the back side. So essentially what I'm doing is I'm, I'm dipping my, my, iron, my iron into like low melt paste. Now I like to add some heat. That's gonna help things flow way faster.
This thing is so loose, it look, it's about to fall off. Well, it seems like it's about to fall off. There we go. Port just came off. It was holding on by a thread. What do you want me to say? Now that we've gotten the port off, let's take a look at the pads and see what we're actually missing. On the top side, I'm just gonna flow a little bit more low melt. Still have a bit of that lead-free kind of texture on the top. So I'm gonna cut this piece of wick just a little bit smaller. And I always use a little bit of hot air and a little bit of uh, a little iron. Oh, it looks like that pad is actually there. Let's flip this over to the back side. That's it. Always important to clean up. So let's get this on the other side. Got a little bit of hot air to loosen up the dry flux. Then go ahead and clean this area. So is that an oxidized pad or is that a pad that's gone? Yep, that's a pad that's gone, which is fine. I have a trick for that. I'm going to use a solder lug where basically we take uh, these little individual cutouts. It's a little shiny, so it's hard to see. Let's go on the side where we can pull it off. We'll take one of these cutouts. Sorry, guys. We'll take one of these cutouts and we'll expose the trace and we'll, we'll actually have something to put in place. So let me show you the process. Um, it's pretty straightforward. You're gonna need some UV solder mask. Um, I'm going to be using a number 11 blade. 
just to expose the uh, the trace and then you're gonna need a UV light of some sorts to dry the uh, the mask. Let's take a piece of this off. It's a small little piece. Grab it by the tail so we don't damage the head. That's all we need. We have a uh, we have a location where we, where we have to rejoin the connection. So how do I know this? If we take a really close look right here, um, you usually see like a via and and a small trace. For instance, this is ground. This is this is ground. This is ground. But this is actually this is this is an important um, path for signal. So we're gonna scratch this back, we're gonna expose it, and then we'll just we'll run our jumper from here to here. We could actually expose this over here too. It's a I, I prefer doing this area um, just because this is a really thin trace right here. So let's go ahead and expose the mask around this area right here. Just enough copper. You don't have to go around the whole entire circle, but just enough, just enough that we, we could tin it, and then we can we can um, have enough exposed to, so that solder can stick, so we can be able to solder something to it. Um, let's double check with our multimeter now. Yep. So we've got we've got a sick. We've got a reading on this line. We're not getting anything, anything crazy like ground as well, so. Yep. So let's go ahead and uh, tin this trace. That's all we need. Essentially, let's grab our piece of wire. And well, we can go ahead to contend the shielding of that piece of copper. Grab it and just tin it. That's it. I don't need that anymore. We'll go ahead and clean it up. We're essentially going to add some UV mask. All right, let's go ahead and cure this. So we're gonna add some flux and uh, we'll get this, we'll get this HDMI header ready. So let's go ahead and get this HDMI installed. I do have some of those replacement HDMIs, some capacitors, ceramic capacitors. You can get them from IG. These are the 10 pack OEM HDMI uh, 
replacement capacitor that's sitting right next to the HDMI port. So we'll go ahead and put this capacitor on. It's this little guy over here. So I'll just grab one. Be very careful because when you open this pack and you try to, if you open up one of them without it being in, under the microscope, they're all they're gonna fall out on the table. <laughs> you, you're gonna think you're gonna think IG shipped you a package that's empty. So I always grab. Let's go for the other side. I think I've already used a few. So we'll grab one of these bad boys, and I'd like to just flip it over. So it falls into the flux, as so. And we'll go ahead and get that soldered on. There it goes. That's in place. At this moment, we're just going to go ahead and uh, flow our anchors. Move on to the next side. clean up one last time before we install the port I like to have everything float already um, as far as the anchors and everything on the HDMI header because once you once I pretend my HDMI port is basically it's almost like you don't really have to do much work after that it's all about preparation so there's many ways to do this you could put the port on and just solder each individual pad pin one by one. I did that for a very long time. Although I was used to it, I just wanted to try something different. All right, so let's go ahead and grab an HDMI port in just a second. I like to work very clean, obviously. We're doing, it, we're doing this at a, at a professional level. So I treat every PlayStation 5, PS4, Xbox, I, tr I treat every device like it's my own device. And that's a really cliche thing to say, but it's, that's just the way that I work. I take a lot of pride in my work, but I like to be as clean as possible. Although when I first started, I did have issues like just leaving I was leaving a bunch of, a ton of flux on the board, and it's a habit that I just had to break really, uh, really soon. All right, let's get this port ready. So all we're gonna do is pretty much verify our part. The part looks like, looks like it's in good condition. Uh, pins aren't, pins are aligned. Anchors are more or less aligned. I pre-inspect everything. I even pre-inspect pre brand new parts, so. Uh, this is, uh, this is what I, if it, if this is considered a major job, especially on an expensive console like this, so I just want to make sure I don't have to do anything twice, essentially. So we're just going to add a little bit of flux and grab us some Kester solder, preferably a lower, den a lower density iron. Um, for example, I wouldn't use an iron like this to add, a, uh, to add solder to the pins. I would use something, something that's a little bit more controllable. Something that's small. So let me grab some solder. And I'm just basically pretending. This is usually the step that most guys do on the board. 
which is fine doing it that way. Um, sometimes, in, in, in some occasions, you may need to go back and still touch up uh, after doing this method if you don't have an even amount. But for the most part, I go over this once and I have enough solder to grab onto the existing solder, if that makes sense. You especially want to pretend since you're dealing with, we're dealing with, uh, you know, jumpers and stuff like that. Well, just one jumper. But it's always a good idea to pretend. In the beginning, I thought this pre pretending thing took more time. But boy, when I'm when I'm done with this, this is it's like I feel like I, I don't have to do as much work. I try to get them a little a little bit spiky on purpose. All right, so we're going to switch camera angles. Um, I'm going to get the board hanging off the little off the table just a little bit. So you can kind of get uh, two perspectives on how I get this port installed. Okay, let's get this installed. I'm gonna add some flux right over here. So on our HDMI header, you definitely want plenty of flux. And I'm gonna go ahead and just use some, today we're gonna be using some ceramic tweezers. So essentially ceramic doesn't um, absorb heat like, like metal. So you're no longer having to deal with your tweezers essentially becoming a heat sink. Because when you're using tweezers that look like this and you're going to go grab the port, sometimes if they're thicker tweezers, uh, that you're, you're, you'll, you'll start to see that it takes a little bit longer to get the port to settle down because essentially your, your tool becomes a heat sink. So it's always a good idea to use uh, ceramic tweezers. So let's go ahead and set my temperature. I'm using the JBC JTSC. I use close to max everything on here to get this port on. Shouldn't take that long. All right, so we'll go ahead and start preheating the board. Once, once you see the, uh, the anchors, the blob on the anchors solidify and kind of settle down, and you'll notice the, the solder is going to become a, a shinier kind of a texture, that's when it's kind of ready for us to set the port down. So we're just moving and saturating our, our hot air evenly. We go from side to side. Side to side, we got a little bit on this side. We'll go ahead and set this board down. Hold it. At this point, I like to add a little bit more flux and give it like a reflow in alignment. So we'll go ahead and put this to the right so we can see it. See it going into place. So be patient, it's going to fall and drop. You can adjust this. Hold. We'll check for alignment in just a second. But you want to hold firm, not too hard.
and everything is settled into place. So we'll go ahead and check for alignment real quick. Zoom in really close. Also wanting to pay very close attention to the uh, the pad that needed the the jumper. Just move a little closer so we can see it. Let's clean it up real quick. Looks like everything is uh, making a solid connection. Uh, let's go ahead and see if we can move anything that's any of the pins that are on the pads. So we will just give it a quick tap. And that looks solid to me. This is where we made the jumper. So what I like to do is also make sure we still have a dial reading. Taking a look at the anchors. Anchors are nice and solidified. This is uh, the majority of the support, the structural support from an HDMI is going to be the anchors. So it's really important that you float them down. Like you get, you get, you get the solder to flow down evenly. Okay, let's go ahead and check this really quick before we assemble it. So I am just going to check, make sure we have a connection, a dial reading. Give me one second, red probe on ground. So, so we don't have a connection, I'm not getting a connection reading, I did get a reading over here by the, let's see if we can get a reading by the trace, we get a reading by the trace but not on the pin, so essentially what I'm going to do right now I don't know if the little thin line broke, but I am going to run a jumper. I'm going to run a jumper from here to here. But that's why it's good to check before you uh, assemble a console back together. We have, we have resistance value on the trace. We just don't have it from here to here. So if I scratch back... Just out of curiosity, if I scratch back just a little bit, I'm wondering if this guy over here, some way, somehow, just broke. Like the, the connection, you know? So the pad is there. So we'll test around this area to kind of see what what connections are still still viable and we will check again so we look like we have a connection something became disconnected over here so essentially what I'm going to do is just leave it as is. I'm going to clean some of this up. I'm going to scratch this back off. 
and re rejoin the connection. Maybe due to the heat or whatever the case, something over here lost the connection. So let's go ahead and rejoin this connection. That's a robust connection. From here, I'm seeing that the, the pin is sitting on top of the pad and everything's making a good connection from that pad. I just think we lost connection from over here. Some way, somehow, but we'll fix that. We will fix that. It looks like it came off from that trace. We can get a reading on that trace. From that VM. Yeah, so the connection just broke off. So let's get a good connection with that pad with the, uh, with the jumper wire. Turn my extractor back on and retin it. Okay, now that we got that in place, let's see if we have a signal, a dial reading specifically. The pad on the pin. Yep. So that's all it was. It became disconnected. I guess a pocket of air, or gas, or something uh, made the um, made the the wire slightly move. So we'll go ahead and clean this up. So before I like to assemble everything fully back together, uh, what I do at this phase is I pretty much plug in the fan, plug in the front daughter board connector and the power button and the APU bracket. So uh, from this point, we could just test if we have a video output. Uh, we have a video output signal and all as well. Um, then I'll go ahead and fully assemble the console. Um, so let's get this connected to a TV. Let's see what we get. Let me go ahead and turn this on. Turn on this monitor. We do get fan spin. We have disconnected to HDMI number one. We've got a white light. There we go. It's gonna kind of reboot itself and change the resolution. So we're just waiting for a solid white light. There we go. So we've got video. So this one was straightforward. So essentially we discovered that there was a broken pad um, on the HDMI header and we were able to restore that um, by adding a piece of jumper, soldering it in place and adding some UV solder mask. Uh, I think what's really going on with these PlayStation 5s is that we have this little clip on the back of the PlayStation 5 and when the customer or the user is using the unit, it tends to slide forward over time. Um, if you don't install this properly, I know you have to connect this between the triangle and the square. Uh, in the back, there's kind of like a pattern where you have to adjust the alignment. And this thing right here has a bad tendency of just sliding off. I mean, I'm just, I'm barely tapping this and look how easy it is to slide. So it's supposed to be locked in place once it's set. You know, you're supposed to set it and forget it. But uh, I'm commonly finding that customers are telling me uh, they woke up in the morning and their PlayStation 5 was on the floor. So I'm guessing that could hit the edge of their table, wall unit, entertainment center, TV stand, wherever they have it propped up and situated. 
Uh, and yeah, I'm gonna guess that's probably the main reasons why they're breaking besides people just jamming the HDMI port in the back of the PS5s. But uh, this, is, this is something that we offer. Uh, we even offer this as, as, as a mail-in repair. So if you wanna get this repaired, look at the, the links down in the description. Um, you can see, you can find us on our social media page and uh, we'll definitely be able to expedite that repair for you. Uh, if you have any questions or you wanna see any more content, just uh, leave a comment down below uh, for more, more awesome content and we see you guys soon.